All right, thanks for joining everyone. Um, so we're gonna get started today to talk about if you're coming into year two at the Vancouver campus, what you can expect for your next steps today. So applicants from different locations will have some different dates associated with your application. So definitely check online and look at your offer letter if you've received one for any specific dates to you, but these are our general dates here. So any scholarships are expected to be announced by the end of April uh, for incoming students. The deadline is May 1st to accept your offer for most students. However, for many transfer students, we do admit students later on throughout May and June. So once your final transcripts are received from your current post-secondary, that's typically when we admit most of our transfer students. So if you are being admitted later, then you'll usually have about two weeks to accept your offer uh, from the time of receiving an offer letter. Once you do accept your offer of admission, you'll then get access to Workday and be given your CWL, which you can use to submit the placement for second year placement. If you've been admitted before May 15th, be sure to submit the, the second year placement form by May 15th. However, for students admitted later on, you'll receive an email with a personalized link to the preference form, and you'll usually be given about 48 to 72 hours to submit that at that time. Placement results are usually released in late June or early July, and then course registration usually happens about a week later. Uh, of course, there's deadlines for you to submit all of your documents and everything like that. So again, be sure to check your Applicant Service Center of the dates that apply to you. But once you register in courses, really the next thing for you is to show up to your first day of classes, and that will be on September 3rd. So let's talk about uh, what to expect for costs coming up for you, um, both throughout the summer and into next year. So there's a few things that you have to be aware of to pay. This is what kind of your fee schedule looks like leading up into early September. So when you accept your offer, you will need to pay your tuition deposit to accept it. That is $500 for Canadian uh, citizens or permanent residents and $1,000 for students on a study permit. From June onward, if you are an international student, typically around course registration time, you'll be assessed for what's called IMED, which is your medical insurance fees for international students coming to BC. Um, and again, that's if it applies to you, you will be assessed for that. You'll see that in your financial assessment. Then the next big payment is September 4th. So once you have registered in your courses, you'll see what your specific tuition will be. Um, and you'll see that in Workday. And then that due date to pay that is September 4th. So a few other kind of financial deadlines to pay attention to. So Canadian students should apply for student loans um, by the end of July and U.S. students or about four weeks before you start um, your studies. And the same thing for U.S. students. If you're applying for loans, you should be applying by July 31st, or again, about four weeks before you're planning to start uh, your studies. So um, by applying by that deadline, you'll also be eligible, uh, you may also be eligible for the UBC bursary program if you're a Canadian student. That helps to meet unmet financial need as determined by your student loan provider. Bursary money for Canadian students uh, is money that doesn't need to be repaid if you remain in full-time studies for the year. It's usually paid out in December, so it's kind of meant to meet any of those costs that come up. Uh, for uh, that you've been assessed for as part of your student loans. Again, U.S. students can apply for many different student loans at UBC because we are a recognized institution. Um, so if that is you, then definitely just make sure that you're doing that before the end of July. There are UBC scholarships available for students throughout your time at UBC, and you can find more information about this on the UBC website. However, I'd also encourage you to check out external scholarships available to both Canadians and international students. Anytime that we hear about that, we share it through our UBC engineering newsletters, so be sure to pay attention to those emails. We always list any scholarships that we're aware of, um, and there are actually lots this year that I'm seeing for transfer students. So those are really uh, good for you to check out as a transfer student to help pay for some of your school. 
Of course, there's other ways to pay for school, like a registered education savings plan, your personal savings. You can work uh, through a work learn job as a part time uh, job on campus. And then we also have our co-op program that I'll talk more about in a second. However, the best way to get help with any questions related to finance is really through your ESA or your enrollment services advisor. Um, and this is where they can really help out. So they can help you with anything related to your finances, tuition, awards, student loans, anything like that. And in May, you can expect to get an email from them where you'll be able to access them throughout your entire time at UBC. So they're a really great resource to take advantage of. All right, so now that we've covered some of your finances, we're gonna go on to some of the general next steps for incoming students into year two. We'll talk a little bit about some of the academic advising pieces to be aware of as well. So you'll be joining us in year two, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be missing out on anything. There is still lots to look forward to. Related to academics, you'll begin taking courses focused on your engineering program. So it's very exciting that you get to take those really focused courses. There's also our optional co-op program and applications to co-op open at the beginning of year two. Um, if accepted to the co-op program, your first work term will usually be in the summer after year two. Now, co-op is an optional way to gain work experience while getting paid really well, and it'll give students a competitive advantage when they graduate. Most of our positions are located in Canada, but there are jobs located around the world in the USA, Germany, Japan, Australia, and more. Some of the top companies that hire our students include Tesla, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Schneider Electric, and Cardium. And co-op will extend your degree by year, but you'll be graduating with 20 months of paid work experience. You'll also get to meet lots of other students throughout your uh, time through your team-based project courses that you'll take um, in class itself. But through your extracurriculars, you can also meet lots of other students as well. So once you have accepted your offer to UBC Engineering, you'll be able to complete the second year placement form. I mentioned a little bit about this already. If you've been admitted before May 15th, be sure to submit this form by the May 15th deadline. For students admitted later, again, you'll receive an email with a personalized link to the preference form. You'll usually be given about 48 to 72 hours to submit it. And it is good to remind you that the programs are competitive at the Vancouver campus and your placement will be based on your admission average and how you choose to rank those programs. You'll also provide a personal statement, which is read by your first choice program and can also help boost your GPA for that program as well. Even if you haven't been offered admission yet, I still encourage you to check out our website so that you can explore what that is going to look like for you and really understand that so that once you are offered admission, hopefully that you'll be able to finish that form very quickly and kind of know all about it. Now, it is also important to notice that these placement forms are not processed on a first come first serve basis. So submitted a, a preference form earlier than the deadline will not give you a higher priority in receiving a placement in your first choice program. Um, but we highly uh, recommend getting it in by the deadline or getting it in uh, once you get that email about your offer and how to submit this. We do strongly recommend that you rank all UBC Vancouver engineering programs on your preference form, so all 14 of them, and that you do not rank the UBC Okanagan programs if you have no intention of possibly relocating to the Okanagan. Because if you are placed at the Okanagan, if you've ranked that on your form, you would be expected to attend that campus, which is just a reminder about a four and a half hour drive from Vancouver in about an hour flight. So it's not an easy commute by any means. Uh, the other thing I do want to mention is students are often very concerned of how competitive this is. What does it look like? The majority of students are going to get one of their top choices. And if you look at our programs available, you'll find that a lot of them will lead to the same career path um, or very similar career paths. So we do encourage you to take all of that into consideration and know that the majority of our students are getting one of their top choices. Second year placement will be completed about a week before course registration begins and registration will happen in Workday in early July. Your engineering program or your discipline will reach out to you directly via email to let you know what courses to register in, as well as lots of details of how to register. So please be sure to keep an eye on your email and follow all of those instructions very closely. 
So I hope that you did get a chance to hear from some of our design teams or EIDA's groups today that are here this evening uh, and to learn more about the projects that they get to work on, because that might be something that you're interested in joining. But you can also find an even smaller community within UBC Engineering by joining your department club. Uh, to further network and connect with other students in your department. So your department or your discipline. So if you're in mechanical engineering, there'll be a club just for our mechanical engineering students or a club just for our materials engineering students or a club just for our chemical and biological engineering students. So you can get involved in that department club, which is definitely a really smaller knit community. Um, but of course, you still have opportunity to connect with more than 400 campus wide clubs that you can get involved in intramurals in so many way, more ways to get connected to your community at UBC Engineering. Now, of course, everything available to you in year two will continue to be available to you in your upper years, but there's also a few additional things that you can consider. So in year three, you can begin a minor in entrepreneurship, commerce, arts, science, or honors math. And you can also choose to go abroad through our coordinated international experience program to one of our 17 partner institutions around the world. And these partner institutions are also some of the top engineering schools. So it's a really great opportunity to get to go abroad, take some courses still, and really get to explore the world. In year four, all of those design and project courses that you completed throughout your degree will culminate in your capstone project, where you'll solve challenging real world problems proposed by industry partners. Projects are very diverse and could include innovating existing technology or designing something entirely new. And if you want to see what some of those projects are all about, you can use the link below. So if you just scroll down on your screen, you'll see a whole bunch of links. Um, and then if you are close to the Vancouver campus next week on Thursday, April 11th from 2 to 5 p.m., you can actually check out the Design and Innovation Day event happening, which will allow you to see many of our different capstone projects that are happening. Transfer credits uh, is also a question that we often get asked by our uh, transfer students, of course. So transfer credit will be assessed by our admissions office, but if you have additional questions, you can use the EIS contact form and cite transfer credits as your topic. In late April or within a few weeks of your offer of admission by an engineering advisor, you'll also receive, uh, so an, sorry, an engineering advisor will send you more details in an email about how your transfer credit will apply to your degree. So keep an eye out for that. Again, in late April or within a few weeks of your offer of admission, an advisor from EIS will reach out via email to let you know more about your transfer credit. You can also go to the Academic Services website, the Engineering Academic Services website that will provide lots of information about transfer credit, which I have linked below as well. So I have a couple of minutes left to answer any questions that you've posted. On the screen right now, you can see um, our Engineering Stories link. So on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, we have current students sharing all about their student life at UBC. So I highly encourage you to check that out. You can also see my email here in case you have any questions that you want to reach out to me about. So I have a couple of questions that were posted here, so I will answer them. Um, so the first one, um, how would you be evaluated if you did some courses at a university and then decided to enter the engineering transfer program at one of the partner schools in the lower mainland? So we have a lot of students that will do that. Um, how you'll be evaluated is if you're doing the full engineering transfer program, you'll still be considered with those requirements of the engineering transfer program. So you need to meet that 3.1 GPA. You need to complete all of those required courses. If you are meeting those requirements, then you should be admitted to UBC. Oftentimes, we do need to see your final transcripts for that, though. So you would expect that you may, if you haven't been admitted yet, you may be waiting until May or June once we've been able to review your final transcripts. All right, I have to run. I'm going to be on the stage, so I'll hope to join you there for a couple minutes to wrap up, and then we'll be open again for Q&A advising sessions for the next half an hour or so. So you still have time to get all of your questions answered. Um, hopefully you've learned some things from this presentation and give you some answers. But again, if you haven't had all your questions answered, feel free to join us um, in the Q&A advising starting in about five more minutes.